This video will discuss about the main post-processing methods to address NVH diagnostics and how to expand and speed up workflows with Altair Compose as the tool chain. There are powerful tools to post-process NVH results, like Hyperview, with advanced animation and contour features to enhance results visualization, and Hypergraph, highly automated plotting software for evaluation of thousands of curves. These solutions can be extended and complemented because Altair Compose expands post-processing capabilities with these key takeaways. Create math-based derived results. Automate processes that simultaneously depend on results, math and visualization. Reduce product lead time and extensive manual work. Have an open framework to use companies' methods. Let's talk about NVH conventional post processing methods. The NVH engineer is interested in obtaining answers to questions like Which modes excite the structure? Which panel has the largest contribution? How much energy does this panel or mode has? Which body interface dominates the critical NVH response? What variable is the most influential in the NVH response? To tackle these questions, there are different diagnostics techniques, such as modal or panel participation, to evaluate the complex distribution of a structure or fluid mode to a response, transfer path analysis, to identify the complex contribution of the excited structure through attachment points, sensitivity analysis, to measure the change in response with respect to a change in a design variable, typically used for optimization. An order analysis to identify harmonic multiples of the engine's fundamental firing frequency. But what if the NVHCA engineer needs further post processing with advanced techniques? It turns out that Compose addresses further post-processing with advanced abilities like signal processing, statistics, optimization, and handling of multiple result files. Let's talk about advanced post-processing with Compose to answer these questions. There are two important features in Compose to handle with these technical needs. The first one is function registration a feature that enables a user-defined function created in Compose to be used in other Hyperworks applications. When we click with the right mouse button on the function name, there is an option to register the function. After clicking on it, a window pops up with the list of registered functions so far. As we are going to see shortly, this procedure exposes the user-defined function to other Hyperworks applications like Hyperview and Hypergraph. The second feature is about Compose's CA readers. We have a robust support for files from multiple solvers of finite element method, computational fluid dynamics and multibody systems, which means that no translators or converters are required to read the results within these files. As we have integrated all CA reader capabilities from Hypergraph, we are neutral and therefore read not only Altair solvers but other vendors too. Let's see an example how to convert non-structural displacements into dB and dBA in Hypergraph. The outputs from a frequency response analysis are non-structural displacements and we'd like to convert them into dB and dBA that is, sound pressure level unweighted and weighted according to a certain weighting curve to approximate the sound that the human ear hears. The conversion follows these equations and therefore it's not trivial to apply the DBA expression in the arrived results menu of Hyperview or in Hypergraph and it would start to become complicated to write it and to debug it. Using the function registration feature, we can double click on the user defined function name and hit register function. Then we see that it has been registered. We can see in the preferences file saved in documents folder that the script is listed as registered and composed version is pointed to build the bridge that connects it with other Hyperworks softwares. Switching to Hypergraph, 
we can load the original curve with non-structural displacements as a function of frequency and create a new plot with sound pressure level unweighted and weighted. The expression to convert the values to decibel is fairly simple and may be used directly in hypergraph, but the conversion to weighted decibel is more complicated through hypergraph's interface and may be done simply calling the new user-defined function that has been registered in Compose. We pass the frequency vector and its respective displacements as arguments and we can directly see the curve in the plot window. As soon as we register the function in Compose, we can see it in the list of hypergraph functions. The next example is a variation of what we just saw, because it showcases how to convert non-structural displacements into dB and dBA in Compose. The second feature that we talked about was the CA read in Compose, and that is what we are going to explore. First of all, let's add one breakpoint to slowly run the script as we advance, so we can see each plot that is generated and not all of them at once. Let's give the same result file as input along with subcase, response type, request point and component. An empty figure is created and positioned with this command. Then. We can query the result of non-structural displacements using readVector function to import these results. The first readVector operation gets the frequency vector, while the second one gets the displacements. In the first plotting area, we will show the original result just like in hypergraph. Then, we convert them into sound pressure level and weighted sound pressure level. This one uses the same function that we registered before. Finally, let's show in a second plot in area the pressure level in dB and in dBA, adding a legend to help identify the curves. When we run the script, we can see that the same curve that Hypergraph generated was created with Compose in the second plot too, meaning that not only the CA results were properly imported, but also the calculation is the same. Leveraging Compose CA readers. The outputs are essentially the same using the script to convert non-structural displacements, either in Compose or in Hypergraph, and the choice to use one or the other depends on the product development process. If the aim is to automate the conversion of dozens of files in batch mode on a cluster, for example, Compose is more appropriate than Hypergraph. But if the aim is to connect the plots to an automated report, Hypergraph is more suitable in this case. Moving to the next advanced post-processing method, which is oralization, it is a reproduction of sound inside the cabin under operating conditions, useful for applications such as subjective evaluations in order to create an interface with users who are not acoustics experts, because it is of vital importance to take into consideration the human factor. In numerical simulations can be used to synthesize sounds, which is accomplished through a conversion of signal to time domain in an audible range to create an audio file with the sound experienced by the driver. As Compose is a multi-language development environment, we support different languages like CoML, we've been using it since the beginning of the video, and Python. OML has a bidirectional bridge with Python that allows the integration of both languages in the same script. And we will leverage this synergy using Python packages NumPy and SciPy to create the audio file. Our next example shows how to synthesize an audio file based on a simulation output. Taking the weighted sound pressure levels of the previous example, we can resample the file to 41.1 kHz, which is a common sampling frequency in audio CDs, for example, and create an audio file with 5 seconds. First of all, compute a rational fraction approximation of the new sampling frequency and the original one. These results will be used to resample the signal. After resampling it, let's create a double-sided signal spectrum based on the single-sided one that we already have by simply reflecting the existing data. 
As phosphory transform matches the input signal with complex exponentials and a cosine is the sum of two complex exponentials divided by two, we use flip function to reverse or reflect the order of the elements along the length of the vector and divide it by two to have half the energy in each half of the spectrum. Then we can apply inverse phosphorea transform to convert the signal from frequency to time domain. After that, let's compute the absolute values of the signal and normalize it. Now it's time to export our variables to Python workspace in order to leverage SciPy audio capabilities. We can also see both OML and Python command windows side by side. With export to Python function, these OML variables will now be understood in Python with these variable names. What we have next is the Python script being called by evolve python file function, and we can see that this file imports the necessary Python packages and creates the audio file based on the signal and the sampling rate, which is the ratio of sampling frequency to the length of the audio. We will also output a message to make sure that the script ran seamlessly until the end. This message can be retrieved from Python workspace and printed in OML workspace using getPythonVar function. When we run the script, we see that the flag message has been printed, showing that the script ran just fine, and we can verify the creation of the audio file and play it. If we try to visualize Python variables that came from OML, we can use the command window to verify that the communication worked properly. We type the variable name in Python and the corresponding one in OML and they match. Our last subtopic about advanced post-processing is a spectrogram, which is a visualization tool to extend the representation of a spectrum usually vibration or noise magnitude as a function of frequency, to a second dimension, which can be time or speed. It is convenient for the evaluation of discrepancies between the frequency domain and time domain results. In this image, for example, we can see a higher intensity of sound between 2 and 3 seconds in frequencies lower than 100 Hz. Our last example in today's video demonstrates how to plot the spectrogram of a simulation output. Taking the weighted sound pressure levels of the previous example, we can use Python again, exporting the relevant variables from OML. SciPy again has broad capabilities related to spectrograms. After importing the packages that will be used, we collapse a spurious dimension of the signal that comes from OML and use a spectrogram function. The result is a 2D plot of time versus frequency. When we run the script, the spectrogram plot is generated and we can see a higher intensity of sound pressure level between 2 and 4 seconds in low frequencies. Please visit Alta Forum, a place where users can interact, ask questions, exchange information and post about model-based development.